Shalom brothers and sisters. Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith and holding on to hope during these times. I have been busy. I've been engaged in a lot of different things, ministry related things, and I just really welcome an opportunity to spend time with the Father and spend time with you, my brothers and sisters, in prayer and talking about the things related to prayer. You know, in this life that we live, it's good to do good and we desire to do good for the Most High. We love Him so much and we love one another, but we must guard against busyness because busyness can lead you to a place where you're working for the Most High, but you're not communing with the Most High. And it's really easy to fall into the trap of, as I say, as I said before, working for the Father, but not spending time with the Father. So we must be on guard against that, brothers and sisters, especially as we are coming coming into the awakening and we want to know, we want to research, we want to spend time understanding what happened to us and what is happening to us and what is coming in the future so we watch video after video after video and we are researching and digging into the history and we're reading books and magazines and journals and we're busy little beavers searching out truth but are we spending time in the father's presence i'm going to challenge you brothers and sisters that there's no more important activity that we can engage in than spending time in the Father because He's our life. He is our life through His Son. So we need to research. That's important. But it's more important to make sure that we're spending adequate amounts of time in prayer. And I'm preaching to myself first because busyness can lead us away from the Father. And may we never be so busy that we find ourselves adrift, away from the source of life. So today's topic for our sunrise prayer is the topic of not so much busyness as much as fruitfulness. And not the fruitfulness that comes from being busy or accomplishing lots of things, but the fruitfulness that comes in being connected and attached and united with the vine, the true vine. So we're going to be reading today a few verses of scripture in John chapter 15. So we'll begin at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. So for those of you who aren't well versed in the King James, or who aren't well-versed in gardening terms, a husbandman is a farmer, someone who owns land and cultivates it to bring forth fruit and bring forth crops for his purposes. So Yahusha is the true vine, and Abba is the husbandman. Verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So what Messiah is saying here is that we are in him. He is the true vine. The father is the husbandman or the farmer. And we are branches in the vine. He is the main vine. The life, the life's blood of the vineyard runs through the vine. And the branches are connected to the vine. So we are connected to Messiah, our life. Our life is hid in him and every branch that is connected to him that's not bearing fruit he takes away 
we are talking about fruitfulness. If you're not bearing fruit unto righteousness, he takes those branches away. They're purged. They're cut off. And every branch that is bearing fruit, he purges it so it can bring forth more fruit, meaning he may snip here or there. He may trim this from your life or trim that. He may break that or pull that leaf. He'll do whatever it takes in order to make sure that the branches that remain are bringing forth more fruit. And he says to his disciples, as he speaks here in John chapter 15, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Almost as if the word itself is what purges us and cleans us. When we hear a word from Yahuwah through his son, Yahusha, it cleanses us and we are washed by the water of the word. Hallelujah. Another way in which we are purged clean is just spending time in his presence, soaking in the aroma like the shoe bread in the temple, soaking in the aroma of Yahuwah, and it changes us. If you imagine us as loaves of bread, soaking in the aroma of the fragrance of, of uh, stack tea or the aroma of cassia or the aroma of cinnamon the aroma of frankincense or myrrh it changes the bread the bread is no longer able to stand on its own without those fragrances being a part of that bread and we become one with the father through his blessed fragrance that flows in and through us. This is to be our condition before him. And so we learn here, he says, abide in me, meaning remain, stick close to me, stay with me, live in me, and I in you. And we learn here that we cannot bear fruit apart from the vine. Now you would think that we would know that, but sometimes we don't always operate in that truth. We cannot bear fruit unless we are connected to the vine. The life runs through the vine. We are merely the branches connected to the vine. So we must stay close to and we must tend to our relationship with the branch because we don't want to wither and die. Okay, so we're going to continue here before we do, there's one more sentence I wanted to read. He said, Messiah says, He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Now that's a statement, brothers and sisters. Without him we can do nothing. But just imagine, you're a branch, and you disconnect yourself from the vine. How long will you actually survive? How long will a branch that has been disconnected from the life-giving vine actually survive? So what he's saying is that you have no life, you have no ability to do anything of any consequence if you disconnect yourself from the source of life. Without him, we can do nothing. We are nothing without him. Verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so that ye shall be my disciples, my disciplined ones. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye. In my love. Wow, this is so beautiful. Messiah is telling us that if we disconnect ourselves from the vine, we're cast out, cast forth, cut off, and we wither and we die. And the only good for us is to be gathered by men and thrown into the fire and to be burned because we're dried branches with no life, producing no fruit. So, Men gather us as we fall off and throw us into the fire and we're burned, meaning we undergo judgment. We are handed over into the hands of the nations and we undergo judgment. And we know that happened to us as a nation. We were burned with the fire of judgment. But if we abide in him 
and his words abide in us, we will we shall ask whatever we will. <laughs> ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Another powerful statement. Ask what you will, because if Yahushua's word abides in us, we will not ask amiss. We will not ask for anything that will not serve the purposes of the Father. So anything that you could possibly ask for will be in alignment with the will of the Father for you. You won't be asking for things that don't profit or that are sinful or that make you draw away from the Most High in any way. You just won't ask for it. You won't want it. When the Father asks you, what do you want, my dear? What can I do for you, beloved? Your answer may be, Oh, I just want more of you, Abba. Just let me draw nearer to you. Just let me get to know you more. Let me inhale more of your blessed fragrance. Oh, Abba, awaken my brothers and my sisters. Awaken them to their true identity so that they can know you and the beauty of your set-apartness and the womb of the morning and the womb of the dawn. It may be something like that. Or maybe something like, Oh, Abba, please grant me that I might be able to raise the dead, or heal the sick, or walk on water. Grant me that I might be able to do the greater gifts. So the prayer that you would pray would be something that would be in perfect alignment with the Father's will for you. You wouldn't be asking for a Maserati. Not very likely. So when we produce fruit, the Father is glorified. The Father is glorified when we produce fruit because he is a husbandman. He's a farmer. He's a cultivator. He's all about that precious fruit. He's all about that precious fruit. When a farmer plants a seed in the ground, his expectation is fruit. And to not have that expectation met is more than disappointing. As a fledgling gardener myself, it's very disappointing when you plant something, you tend to it, you fertilize it, you water it, you make sure it gets plenty of sun, and then it doesn't produce. It, it's just really disheartening. So the Father is expecting fruit. He wants us to produce fruit of righteousness. He wants us to produce big, fat, juicy grapes of love and of compassion and of mercy and of good works. That's what he's expecting of us. He's glorified in that. And in the process, we become disciplined ones. The Word cleans us and purifies us and purges us and we become disciplined. We become Yahushua's disciples. Even though we're far removed from the time of the writing of this, as we do the things that he gave his instructions to his disciples at that time, if we do those things, we will have the same result. And as the Father loves him, Yahushua, so he loves us. He loves us with perfection. He's telling us to continue in his love, meaning there's something that we can do to not continue. He loves us, but we have a part to play. We must respond to his love by abiding in him and staying close to him, not moving far away, not running away, not disconnecting ourselves from the source of our love and the source of our life. Continuing. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And this is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord or Adonai doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things 
I command you that ye love one another. Wow, 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 wow. Out of all the things that Messiah could have commanded his disciples then and us as his disciples now, it's love. I command you, he says, to love one another. For brothers and sisters, truly, love is the fulfillment of the whole Torah. If you were to take Torah and you wanted to sum it up in one word, the one word and the one command would be love one another, love the brethren, love Yasharalim, love Yahuwah. You're hard pressed to not love the Father if you are truly loving your brethren. When you truly love your brethren, you're loving the Father because you're keeping his commandments. You're demonstrating your love for him through your obedience. You're laying down your life for your friends. You're choosing not to be right. You're choosing not to debate. You're choosing not to argue. You're choosing not to have your own way, have your own opinion about things that would make another person, your brother, feel as if they don't matter. You're choosing not how you spend your time. You're allowing the Father to work through you to serve your brethren, to serve your sisters. That's what you're doing. You're giving up your life. You're laying out your life and pouring out your life like a drink offering unto the Most High by pouring yourself in service to your brethren. But it has to be in balance. You can't give so much of yourself to your brethren that you don't have times of refreshing and the Most High's presence. So all things in decency and in order, there must be balance. But Yahushua tells us we didn't choose him. He chose us and ordained us that we should go forth and bring forth fruit and that our fruit should remain and that whatsoever we ask of the Father, he would give it to us as we ask in his name, meaning we are abiding in him. And I think people, especially in Christianity, they take these verses out of context, meaning they think that as long as I say in Jesus name, then I can have whatever I want. Mm -mm, that's not what he's saying here. What he's saying is that you're asking in my name. You're asking in my name because you are abiding in me. You are abiding in my name, my nature, my life force, my, my vine. You are abiding in me. And so you're in my name. You're in my love. You're in my nature. You're in my character. And from that place, you can ask what you will. And the Father will give it you because you are abiding. Hallelujah. And when you do that, your fruit will remain. You will produce fruit and your fruit will remain. It won't go anywhere. It will continue. It will continue and become more and more abundant. And you will bring glory to the Father. But he ends it here. We're going to end in verse 17. And he says one final time, these things I command you, that you love one another. Brothers and sisters, Messiah says the world will know that we're his disciples his disciplined ones, his beloved, his brethren, because we love the brethren, because we love one another. And he's talking to Hebrews here, brothers and sisters. He's telling us it's important to love the brethren. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, cannot love any other group of people unless you love your family first. It's, it's in order. You must love those of your household first. Then you can see your way clear to love those of another household or to open up the doors and allow others to come in. But if you don't love the people in your household, you are out of order if you try to go then and love someone else. It's out of order. It's out of order. And we want to make sure that we are standing in alignment with the divine order of the Most High. We must love one another first and prefer one another. And Yahushua is commanding us to love one another and to prefer one another and to make His joy full, our joy full, and to bring glory to the Most High. Hallelujah. So, we're called to produce fruit, brothers and sisters. 
May you be fruitful today. May you produce the fruits of righteousness, not the fruits of busyness, not the fruits of worry or woe or strife or debate or argumentativeness, not that fruit that's rotten fruit. May you produce the fruits of love, and peace and joy and set-apartness and peacefulness, shalom and forgiveness. May you produce the fruits that remain. May you produce the fruits that saves your brother, that brings your brother into right relationship with the Most High and with you. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Abba, Father, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for the reminder that we must produce fruit. We are called to produce fruit. We are branches. That is what branches do. Fruit bearing branches, that's what they do. They produce fruit. And you intend to produce fruit through and by us, your branches, through your son, the true vine. Hallelujah. He is the true vine. And nothing in him should be halt or maim or have any inability to produce fruit because all the life, all of the life is flowing through him and it should be flowing to us. So if we're not producing fruit, it's through no fault of the vine. The branches may have wriggled itself away from the, from the life-giving force of the vine and disconnected in some way. So if you've disconnected from the Father in any way, if you're feeling distant from him, if you're feeling like you're not connected to him, get reconnected to the vine. Get reconnected. Hallelujah. Abba, help us to get reconnected. When we feel challenged, when we feel angry and upset and hurt, when we feel like we can't feel the Most High's presence, when we feel impatient, help us to get reconnected. Somehow there's been a disconnection somewhere along the line. Help us to reconnect ourselves daily, to make sure we're in the faith, to make sure we're connected to the source of our life, the true vine. Abba, work in and through us to produce fruit unto righteousness and unto power and strength and vitality. Help us to share the basura, the true basura. Help us to live it out. Help us to live as kingdom children and to demonstrate your power and your might while in the land of captivity. Let your Ruach fall upon us. Let it fall upon us and reveal what you desire to do in and through us. Let the greater works come forth. Let us walk on the water and not sink and not take our eyes off of our true vine. May your will be done in our lives, O oh Abba, O oh Abba, O oh Abba. Be glorified by the things that we do, O oh Abba. How can we live without you? How can we live without the true vine? How? There's no way. There's no hope. Help us to recognize our dependence upon the true eye. Help us to recognize our need every day. May your will be done, O oh Abba. May we do the things that are pleasing in your sight. May we step away from the edge of disconnection. And may we reconnect ourselves, doing whatever we must. Time in prayer, time in fasting, fasting from social media, fasting from YouTube videos, fasting from things that don't profit us, and attuning our ear to the voice of the Father and to the true vine. Hallelujah. Oh, Abba, thank you. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for another opportunity to seek your face. We love you, Abba. We love you. We adore you, oh, Abba. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father. Thank you. I just give you honor today. I just thank you today. I had an opportunity right now to say thank you. So I say thank you, Abba. Thank you, Father. 
Abba Yahuwah, 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 let your presence be felt in every home right now, whoever's listening, wherever they're listening, wherever your, your people are listening, and in the car, at work, in the store, in their homes, wherever they are, let your presence be felt, O oh Abba. Fall on us like rain and cause us to bring fruit unto righteousness. Fall on us, O oh Abba, and cause us to bring fruit. Let the, the light of your countenance shine on us. Let your face shine on us and cause us to bring forth fruit and bud. Hallelujah. Let your will be done in our lives, O oh Abba, O oh Father. Hallelujah. There's no greater thing that we could do than being in your presence. Help us to recognize the importance of this. Help us. Forgive us of our sins, O Abba. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Abba, my strength and my redeemer. Let me do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Hallelujah. Save me. Deliver me from secret faults. Deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Deliver me from the attacks that come and the distractions. Deliver me. Deliver me from the fear of man. Deliver me for the love and the praise of men. And set me aside for your purpose so that I might walk in the paths that you have laid out for me. Let your perfect will be done, O Abba. My desire is your will. <laughs> My desire is your will. My desire is your will. Let your will be done every day. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you for hearing. And thank you for answering. And thank you for keeping me. Hallelujah. Come on and I'm on. Hallelujah. Thank you once again, brothers and sisters, for joining me on the channel and for another session of our sunrise prayer. May we all produce fruit unto righteousness and make our Abba delighted and glorified and happy. Hallelujah. May his will be our highest goal and our greatest desire. Hallelujah. May the Most High, Yahuwah, Baruch, bless and keep you, brothers and sisters. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace. And may you, like a planting of Yahuwah, respond to the light of his countenance shining upon you. And may you grow toward the light, grow toward the light and produce much fruit. In Yahushua's name, I pray these things. Aman and Aman. Shalom and Shalom, brothers and sisters. <laughs>